Okay, people. Um, I did say I'll, I'll share some more information with you. Um, sorry, I wanted to go live earlier. We got a pretty big storm here outside. So the internet pops on and off the whole time. So probably to do with the weather. But um, I'll make a video and then I'll put it online as soon as the internet allows. Or I'll share it and hopefully it uploads. Pretty interesting news today about Jacob Zuma being um, sentenced to 15 months in prison. Um, I'm pretty shocked myself actually. I was hoping, well there's, there's time left, but uh, I was hoping it would come clean. So South Africans could know what is, uh, has transpired in the past and what is going on in this country. But um, let me start sharing. Um, initially obviously I started the call, like I said it's a very, very long call. And I asked Neil De Beer um, what he does, or he explained to me, he stopped me basically and explained what he does first. So I'm going to break it up in snippets and I'm going to stop and pause the video and continue. Um, and then take it from there. This is good and well. I will ask you, I, I want to ask you a couple of questions if you don't mind. Because no, Neil, yeah, Neil, as I can it for daily. Before you do, can I ask you, do you know who I am? I mean, do you I've, know, you know I mean? I've, I've seen a little bit um, of, of the videos that you've posted, and I've seen a bit of the yeah. history. You used to work, used to be with Nkonto Isizwe, you used to be one of the spies, um, uh, one of the Mandela spies in, the, um, uh, in, in that, that, that time, in that regime, and whatsoever. But, but you know what I do now. Um, I, I've seen you finished off with Nkontu, and you are starting now this program. You want to become like the. Uh, um, uh, you joined up with Musi Maimani to form a political party, yeah. and you want to change the country and basically become a leader or president. No, no, but do you know what I do for work? I mean, no. I, this is the thing that I always start off with. People don't know what I do. No, no, I don't. At this moment, I don't. I've only seen you. Driving around with the blue brigade, blue light brigade, and making a video. I'm so the, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the president of the World Bank for Africa. Okay, okay, that's that's pretty interesting, actually. Uh, you, that you mentioned I'm the that. President of the Investment Fund Africa, and I sit on the World Economic Forum. Okay. My, my home is actually in Spain. Okay, that's great. I don't stay here. Yes. My head office for the World Bank is in Barcelona. Okay, great. I also run the beers. So I'm the great grandson. Okay, great. Right. I'm the chairman of Dead Course. So what I wanted to tell you before we start questioning, mm. I am not a politician. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm a global economist. Okay. As this side, this side. Okay. Okay, so basically you can hear there, uh, Neil explains that he's the president of the World Bank in Africa. He's a global econ economist and he sits on the World Economic Forum. So I'm going to continue now with this. Okay, so um, then I started questioning, obviously. Uh, you, the, the, the straightforward questions to you is, first of all, how, where were you for 25 years? Where, when everyone in this country was suffering and we could see they draining the blood out of this country. That is my first question. I think the journey is, is a very long journey, but I will explain to you where I was. Uh, I joined the SANDF in, uh, in 1987. Yes. I did take in 1986. I was in Belize at school. Uh, I, I thought I was going to become a farmer. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I had to go to the army. Uh, I spent two years in the Defence Force. Yes. I, I then went from the Defence Force to the police, where I joined the security police for a year. Uh, I, I bought into that dream, you know, the, 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 the New South Africa. The, the Uranium Blanja Blow. Yes, yes. Uh, and I, I, I vehemently love the people. I protected my country. I, uh, my book is out, by the way. Okay, so we can hear and you'll explain to us that he joined the Defence Force, South African Defence Force, and then he went over to the police, and then he went over to the security police. Now, that was my uh, question. How? Did Neil de Beard go from the military, uh, South African Defence Force, to the uh, police and security police, and then join gone to a Surely there must have been some questions. But okay, let me let me uh, continue further. And I think in the book it gives you a retrospective idea of while I was, and, and I don't know. I think people have a glorified ideology what the spy is. Yeah. yeah. And it did not what it's in the movie. Yeah. Uh, I was Russian trained. I'm a KGB trained. Uh, operative. Yeah. Uh, just like, I think in South Africa, the other people were trained more by INI and Neil Barnard, the diamond. Yeah. Um, I worked for, for, for uh, C1 for a long time. I'll actually get you a book, right? Because, you know, I think a talk over a telephone never does. Yes. 
yes, yes, I understand. I, I then changed. I, I, I was in a very horrific situation with the lecture, and as a young activist, that I'm busy actually committing a crime. Yes. Because not I said so, the United Nations said so. Yes, yes. But because I was in a security police conclave, I also knew one thing that very few people knew, yeah? Mm -hmm. And that was that the National Party government, mm -hmm. in the time of 1989, Dave, was surrendering already. Yes, I know that, yeah. I knew it. I knew it. Yes. Because we were the people that were moving the prisoners that were classed as terrorists at that stage around. Yes, yes. So that the National Party, Pak Boda and Ernest Krill and Evie Leclerc can actually negotiate peace settlement, yes? Yes, yes. But they were not negotiating in 89 for peace, David. Yes, yes. They were, they were negotiating indemnity for themselves first. Yes, yes. In a small little house in Simon's Town, David. Yes. So, so it's, like, it's like the Nazi leadership Mm -hmm. going to the Jewish conclave and saying, we get indemnity, then we surrender the Nazis. Yes, yes, I hear you. That's a fartach. Yeah. It's cowardice. Yeah. So, you know, when I watch now as a 51-year-old dad, uh, Okay, so just touching the point, he's going to go a bit further into detail about uh, the, the betrayal of Evie de Klerk and Pukwurta and those people. But um, I'll get to that point just now as well. Now as a 51-year-old and I know, the people calling me for Ryan, mm -hmm. I wonder if they are empathetically understanding the true facts of history, Gary. Aquarium, Aquarium. But that was in the police response of the Vietnam. But we're going to get in for Ryan, the one that Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to get you, Barlard, Ruf Meyer, I get all the names. Yes, yes. It was then very clear to me that if this is going to happen and it doesn't turn the right way, Dave, in 1988, yes? Yes. You will remember Article 435 of the UN then pulled us out of Angola in Namibia. Yes, I remember. I, I, I do. This yeah. is your enemy today. He pointed at the white people, yes? Yeah. He said, this is your enemy today. Tomorrow, these people are your citizens. Yeah. What are you prepared to do about it? That was the, that was the rainbow dream. I, I get that, Neil. I totally get it. But I am, a, honestly, I'm an independent strategic thinker. So no political affiliation, no, I, I'm not a racist at all. I'm, I'm actually, like I said, I'm a realist in many ways. So um, my thinking and building my own puzzle all these years was actually, um, I do see where you come from, but I was always building this puzzle and seeing at the time of 1994, obviously, um, the ANC regime did not have the security forces, the military, the police, everything, all the weapons, everything like that in hand. So there was a delayed time for me. Um, because if I, if I look at the, the role Sil Ramaphosa played and I look at the role all of these uh, people played, I look at the role you would know better than anyone probably, like Chris Arney's role and who took Chris Arney's yeah. out. That was not our people that took him out. That was yeah. not. Say again? But that is it wasn't. There's only 18 people alive. Yes. Yes. That knows who did that. Yes. So, um... We know who the trigger is. Yes, that is true. But who responds to that? Who knows who the trigger is? That is the question. And I've always been... I'm into... Yeah, I'm into all types of affairs. You know, I like to follow these things. What I'm saying, Dave, listen. 18 in 18 mensen weet wie dit was. Well, I've already heard in 2017 and in 2014 in the SLKP Congress that the Likis began to sing Zuma, tell us who really killed Chris Hani. So obviously... Zuma was one of the 18 people that knows because he was the head of intelligence. Yes, that's what I figured at the time. The 18 people, 17. Okay, that's it. So we sit with the same... Okay, so Neil clearly states there that um, uh, Jacob Zuma knows who killed Chris Hani, and um, there was only 18 people alive at the time that knew, and um, seven of those people are dead already. And later on in the discussion, he continues that he also knows who killed Chris Hani. When we came back in 94 and we became a republic, yes, yes. people 
that were in the, can I call it, in the military side of all sides, yes? Yes. For instance, myself, I was, I was in MK, but I was in the intelligence division of MK. Yes. We, as MK, we had only, we, you know, there was reintegration. There was integration from the MK cadres into the defense force, yes. for example. But in K, when we came back in 93, we only had four choices that we had. Yes. yes. You integrate with the police. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so that's the fact we all know. Um, Yulibia was part of Mkontwe Sizwe. And um, like I said uh, in the discussion, he also reveals that he was under Jacob Zuma. So, um, yeah, I'll just keep on sharing snippets. Okay, so now Neil goes on to explain um, his role in the more the financial role the eco in the economy under Mbeki, etc. And the other one that is now flinching on changing is Juga. Yes, yes. Yes. That's the last. Don't me, don't me, Okay. So, so my job for more than 10 years was to be heading up, even in the, now we move to the Mbeki era, yeah. was to start understanding what he meant by when he said an African Renaissance. Yes, yes. Then we started compiling a document, and I'm very proud of that document, called NEPAN. You can Google it. Yeah. The New Economic Plan for African Development. I remember that, yeah. And NEPAN was then tabled at the African Union. Remember the OAU disbanded yeah. and became the AU? Yeah. And NEPAN was adopted in the last term of Mbeki before he got fired was adopted as the official economic plan for, for the African Union. Yes. I did such a good job, Dave. Mm -hmm. I became the head of NEPAN. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, we then changed NEPAN into a, a process to be adopted at that stage. 53 countries. We were not 55 like we are now. This is. We had 53. We only in the last 10 years gained the extra two countries. One of them being South Sudan. Yeah. And the other one is the rejoining of the Kingdom of Morocco to the African Union. Yes, yes. Now, just quickly, the integration uh, uh, to ourselves, I was the one spearheading those negotiations. Okay. At the end of the day. So we then became, you can see there's something called the OAPD. The organization African Business Development. Yeah. And I became the first Secretary General of that African Union uh, 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 Association. Okay. I had to go to 47 countries in one year. <laughs> okay. And I had to go establish the OAPD Sectoral Investment Program. And out of that, we wrote two documents. One is called the AMF. The African Monetary Fund. Mm. Other one is called the African Central Bank, the ACB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day. So I was the person that was driving that. What was, as I so much ask, Neil, what was the. Um, okay, this is, this is the thing. What was the. Um, okay, this is, this is the thing with my bad trigger. We, ons ek weet, so I hier sit, nah, ons Africa and South Africa specifically. Is nie, ons is niet independent nie. Ek sê dit vir jou, ons is niet independent nie. Ek kan die tentacles van allemaal in die buitenland sien in ons land. En ek kan die connecties sien. En, en, ja, en ek kan die connecties sien van sekere mense, sekere bezigheidsmense, sekere um, uh, in ons land sien. En, die, en die, die mag wat hulle uitoefen. Nou, hoe skakel dit in by die economische plan? Want ek, en, en ek sê dit, sê dit nie. Wat die president aan jou in die presidentie is, want het depend van hoe is die president. For example, when 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 um, when Mbeki was the president, mm. no, no, when Madiba was the president, his major influences that he wanted to bring in, yes, mm. was not the West. Yes, yes. It was it was Cuba. Yes. It was Palestine. It was you you were those were his friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Muhammad Gaddafi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Mbeki took over. Remember, Mbeki was a bureaucrat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't a military man. Yeah. Mbeki, who studied in the UK, yeah. yes, yeah. he was more principled to the West. Yes. So, so Great Britain, America, France, 
played a major role in his presidency in, in the tentacles which you so correctly put out there yes. into this country. Now follows Jacob Zuma. Yes. And Jacob Zuma, again, is a militarist. Yeah. He's, he's back at Mkonto as his way. Yeah. So his influence that he brought in was Russia, yeah. China, and India. Yeah. So that's where, that's where BRICS, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what Brazil ever did there. No, nothing. Brazil can't even balance their own books. No, no, but yeah. anyway, they joined. But Russia, India, China were the largest contributors to the Zuma year. Yes. And that's why the BRICS system was uh, brought in. And now you've got Cyril Ramaphosa that's taken over, who is totally, totally aligned to the West yes, again. Yes, I can and see And has that. no interest in running BRICS. That's why currently BRICS is dying. Yeah. Okay, so uh, just to get that point, um, like he explained the president's roles and who they were aligned to, and as we can see and always basically knew is uh, Cyril Ramaphosa is more Western aligned, more aligned to the Queen, um, the Crown, as you could see his visit there as well. And um, that is actually very concerning to me. Um, I'll get to that point later. Okay, so then there's the, the part where he explains um, the, the political system, the people involved. He, had, he doesn't um, admit to it today. He said he never says it on the, on the callback as well. But uh, we explained about Michael Louis and whatsoever. Number one, we five years ago noticed, you know, like I said to you, five-year term, five-year term, five-year term. Yeah. We noticed in the second five-year term of Jacob Zuma, not the first five years. Yeah. In actual fact, in the first five years, he wasn't too bad. He was charismatic. Yes, people yes. actually said, the white people said, yo, what's coming to your back? Yeah. Maar jij praat van die tijd van die second revolution al wat hulle aangekondig het, basis. Met sy tweede... Toen Zuma sy era, toen Zuma president was. Ja. En sy eerste drie jaar as president, nee. Het alles goed geloop. Ja. Alles wat kijk, alles was alweer. Hy was een charismatische ou, hy het by Wittplaase gaan keier, hy was selfs in Oranja. Ja. En die mens het gesê, hierdie ou, hy het die pikkie van Mandela in hom. Ja. Want hy is nie een bureaukraat nie, hy het nie gestudeer nie. Okay, so just to touch that, that point, um, he clearly stated that, um, to, to me it kind of alludes to the fact that Zuma, there's a, there's a chance, a small chance that Zuma might be innocent of state capture. I'm not for one moment saying he's innocent of corruption or anything, but um, he did say, you know, um, there was a verskrikking, he was the, the people surrounding him totally take, took over control of the country, that, that is his statement. Yeah, you don't 
Okay, so there it starts with the Mike, Mike Louis part, um, we nine business families that came together. Now he's going to chit chat a little bit and then it's going to get back to the point of uh, the people involved. country 
Barack Obama president gemaakt het. Ja. Daai ou is by my. Ok. In 6 weke kom hy nou net. Ok. Hy is coming to drive our campaign as the United. Okay, so there he uh, says, you know, in the beginning of the discussion, I mentioned that there was 18 people that knew, and um, I am I'm one of them. So, um, yeah, that's basically, uh, there's, there's lots more, like I said, I'm sifting through and just uh, taking up snippets. Like I said, it's unfortunately not live, so I'm making a video, and um, the storm is really pumping outside here. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, so I, I obviously, because of this, have a lot of questions. Um, I do have a, questions about, a question about the, the involvement of these families, right, within the ANC top enclaves, I'm going to be Seizwe. Um, I, I've got questions about Evie de Klerk, Rolf Meyer, all those guys that, that uh, you know, negotiated indemnity for themselves. I've got, he actually mentions, I, I didn't, uh, I probably skipped past it, I'll, I'll find it as well. He actually mentioned in, mentions in this video, uh, in this audio, that um, Chief Justice Mugweng um, Mugweng is behind him and actually supports him. Um, and he met with him. Let me, let me just see, maybe it's in the next snap. Yeah, yeah. Ons bevondst dit. We are a 
Yes, yes. In Africa. Ek weet toe om a billion te hanteer. Yes, yes. Okay, so I've shared um, a couple of facts with you. Um, Neil de Beer's position, uh, uh, based in Africa, what he was um, doing, rolling out the African Monetary Fund, in, uh, implementing central banks in Africa. Uh, he explains in the end here of, about his own investment fund uh, that spends about 2.5 billion per quarter in Africa and in infrastructure. And he explains his position in going to be Sizwe and um, you know, the military police, the SANDF, and uh, a whole lot of other stuff. There, there's a few points that, that I didn't get now, which I will get together and share as well. Um, basically, the one point is important. Like I said, he, he basically said the Chief Justice contacted him and he met with him. And he supports Neil de Beard as well, and he wants to join him. And funny for me enough is uh, just after that, just shortly after that discussion, um, the Chief Justice went on his long leave. And um, so we, and he's uh, stepping down in September. But uh, this is obviously after the Chief Justice mentioned a couple of things like the vaccines and about Israel, which they weren't too happy about, you know, the public or, or people in the public. So I think it's more of a uh, keeping him safe so he's not open to scrutiny every day and um, for this new system they're going to roll out. And um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll pass through the other stuff. I'll pass through the stuff of the new political system, like I mentioned, um, and a couple of other stuff. And I add this to, to the next video. Um, it's pretty long and it's uh, you must obviously uh, search through. But yes, people, that's a couple of things. I've got another audio as well where he responded to the stuff I released. And um, that that gets a bit uh, quite serious um, in threats and uh, accusations also pointing to certain people. And I will share that a bit later. I hope this, this helps and I hope this makes sense. I, will, I can break it down further for you, but I think you'll get the picture out of this.